Hi fam, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vuvu and this is Vuvu Vena Reads. In case you are new on here, please consider joining the family by pressing that red subscribe button at the bottom. And if you are returning a member of the fam, bam, welcome back fam. And thank you for joining me once again. And today I am coming at you with something that I haven't done for a while. And I don't want to jinx the year, but I feel like these vibes are the thing that's gonna work out for me this year and i'm saying this because i managed to stick to a tbr i want to say maybe in december and in january so something's definitely happening and as much as you guys are aware that i am a mood reader i don't think that will change but there is some kind of you know energy in the air that we need to lean into and as such here is my february tbr so for Vena underscore reads is an amazing book reviewer also youtuber she reviews books on youtube and if i'm not mistaken she also has a blog as well so please if for your connection with literature get in touch with or follow at v-u-v-u-v-e-n-a underscore reads she is based in south africa and i think it is also extremely important to follow literary content creators who are based outside of who are based outside of the west and in continental africa because they do a really good job of bridging the gap we appreciate you Vuvu, for bringing us turning pages and for bringing us your booktube channel you know this is a chance for people to actually see some people that I really enjoy. Please consider pressing the red subscribe button down below. And if you are returning, welcome back, fam. Vuvu, you are amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, let's start with my baby. You remember her? We haven't given her a name yet. Do suggest a name in the comments down below. Um, I'm gonna start with the books that I'm carrying over from last month. Last month, you know that my mission is to read five books a month so if i haven't done five books a month i'm gonna try and add to the following month if you get what i'm trying to say so if i manage to do four it means the next month and i'm gonna do six but if i'm in the mood for more i will definitely then pick around in my shelf for more so um oh child don't lose your spot girl okay <clears throat> so um like I'm saying, I'm starting with the books that I'm carrying over from last month. And first up is Chalk The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. You guys, ooh, hey. Embarrassing much. The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. I think you guys might have heard me talk about it during the last sprints that we had. I wanted to get into it, but then I started working. And it was still flowing very well. This is the debut um, novel by the famous CJ Tudor. And I haven't read anything by her ever. So I thought, why not start with a debut? Because I love me some debuts, okay? I feel like that's the best that I can ever get from an author. I have not been proven wrong to date so i'm still gonna stick with my love for debuts so i know that i want to read her other books um what's the other one that everybody likes i forget what it's called but before i get to that one i wanted to try her out right so that's what i'm reading on the kindle um the chalk man by cj trudeau so far so good i dropped off at some point and now i want to pick up again and um the other thing that i did carry over from last month is a little life by hanya Yanagihara. i'm sure this one needs no introduction um this is our first book club pick for the month of january as the fully booked book club uh which we started with the ladies from fully booked sprints and so far so good absolutely loving this one it is sad i think that i'm still holding off the tears right because i feel like maybe something worse is gonna happen and i can't be caught wailing too soon if you get what i'm trying to say but so far i am enjoying it it is like i'm saying a book that i have brought over from the month before the other one which just refuses to you know be finished but we towards the end is this bad boy over here which is finding me by viola davis i absolutely love the fact that actually it snuck its way into february because we know that for all of those people that do follow american based black content creators um especially in the bookish space february is black history month in america and i think that this is going to be part of 
that vibe for me like i'm saying i'm almost done i'm really almost done with the book so i it can't go into march okay we've been reading her for too long and um the other book that i did carry over from the previous month is the second book in the sarah j Moss series which is a court of mist and fury uh we are still um getting perspective from fairer's um side of things but obviously new things are developing here and new sparks are being sparked <laughs> and we are definitely enjoying this series we've always enjoyed it so that's that's no news okay let me then share with you the new books that i have on my pile and i think i'm gonna start with the south african authors i'm sure you guys know and i have said to you guys maybe not maybe well <laughs> often forget what i've said during the sprints and what i say to you guys on camera but i do think that it was during the sprints when um i think charity asked us what our reading goals for the year for the year reading goals for the year were i don't know what's going on with that speech and i did mention that i want to read more local books preferably from my shelf but if i have a book in mind that i don't have on my shelf that i really want to read i will definitely go off and purchase it so the book series that i'm currently wanting to get into is the scarred series scarred and damned by ayanda kaba uh, i met ayanda at the um i'll see if i have a picture with her actually i'll put it up here at the uh Gauteng international book festival in december and she asked like especially for me to read her book so i did get myself a copy and then um we went at the beginning of this month we went to the elembe 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 book festival the inaugural one in durban kzn and i got the second one she's part of the organizers of that specific um book festival so i got the second book called damned i do want to read you guys the synopsis of these two so whenever i put up any south african slash african books on the channel in terms of tbrs i will definitely give you guys the the synopsis at the back because i do understand that some of these books are not books that are always in anybody else's radar unlike the finding me's the little lives the court of um mist and furies right you guys have easy access to those that are spoken about widely right and i think that we would be doing um our authors a disservice as, as african and south african readers if we don't use our platforms to just give you guys a taste of what it is that they have to offer so with that said i think yes let me let me let me tell you what scarred is about this is the cover Ooh, child. i don't even think you guys will be able to see i think this is a hot mm. I think also my lightning is not is my lighting is not that great but it says scarred for love always leaves a mark a thriller novel by ayanda Kaba. this is definitely not her debut but this is her um first book in the series i want to see if other books by the author ulala the journey of discovery um the maiden and the bear through her eyes and she also contributed in When Secrets Become Stories by Sunyati and other anthologies. I want to see if... Oh, and she writes the best, best, best messages when she signs your books. Like, I have absolutely loved the things that she has written for me. I don't see... I don't see the about her section, but anyway, let's go. It says, Sizwe, with his undeniable charm and good looks, laid in the pool of his own blood, breathless. Ooh. The scar on his left cheek, the only indication of the once notorious lover Mzanzi has ever seen. How many girls did he violate? The police would never know. The scar being a souvenir from his first victim, he spent hours looking at it, admiring it years after the incident. He got an erection every time he touched it. His scar, his mark. Caesar Abandon, the screams were his drug. First, he thought that's all he needed. Just another terrified scream to get his high. But that's not how drugs work. 
we, he would start with the screams, spanking, strangling, raping, burning, cutting. Why stop if you could get more? He never stopped, not until she stopped him. Hey, Bo! <laughs> what am I getting myself into? Okay, so the second book does have about the author. So this is Ayanda. I know my camera sometimes betrays me with this. Focus, Wena. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are gonna see now it says autofocus. Okay, about Ayanda Klaba. Ayanda Klaba is a self published author from Lady Smith Guazulu Nadal who is passionate about her family, women empowerment, and traveling. When she's not creating stories, she is an avid reader who likes binging on horror and psychological thrillers. I could have told you that, yeah. She contributed in When Secrets Become Stories, edited by Sunyati, and her pu has published four books Ulala, The Journey of Discovery, The Maiden, and The Bear the award winning through her eyes and scarred this is her fifth book and the second book in the scarred trilogy okay it's gonna be a trilogy child i don't think the third book is out yet so the second book there is called damned and it says revenge is a love language who i love this cover by the way okay so caesar boyson alexander boyson and dan Bolo. Together, they are the Mbulo brothers, regular colored men owning a restaurant by day, notorious crime scene cleaners running the Johannesburg underground criminal world by night. From being orphaned in Wurzchesich to hustling their way to being one of the city's top players through the help of a long lost sibling and Dan's best friend, the brothers managed to live a double life while building an empire. Dan's life loses its balance when Sizwe, his best friend of 21 years, is found dead. While trying to help their little brother in dealing with his loss, Caesar and Zanda battle memories of their lost childhood and the sacrifices they had to make to get to where they are. As someone who believes in the gospel of vengeance, Dan tumbles into a dark hole trying to find his friend's killer. A blast from the past forces him deeper into darkness and he commits one of the biggest crimes known to man. While trying to fight his strange sexual desires and avenge his friend, he has to deal with the turbulence in his romantic life and loss and loses the very meaning of life. How far will he go to get his vengeance? Okay, so the next one needs no introduction. It's Little Miss Ma'am, who is Angela Makola, and the book is The Black Widow Society. I was going through her books chronologically at some point, and then I fell off, but we back up now, especially since um, Black it's not black red ink is going to be on show back to the series that's her debut um novel i will link my review to that novel up here for you guys in case you have not seen it but the show ha is coming out on the 9th of february on show max and it is an eight part series which will then continue um with new episodes every tuesday so this one is her third book <clears throat> funny enough Red Ink is the debut. It's been turned into a show mix series. 30th, the 30th Candle is her sophomore, which was turned into a Netflix movie last year. So I cannot wait to see what else she does with the rest of her books, if anything at all. So that's very exciting. Um, Black Widow Society is her third book. And it, at uh, the back reads, okay, let me tell you about her first. Angela Bacola lives and works in Johannesburg. Her debut novel, Red Ink, is a gripping psychological thriller. This was followed by the entertaining escapades and sexual misadventures of modern women in the 30th candle black widow society marks a return to an exhilarating crime ridden world and it reads in 1994 when south africans were finally seeing the light of freedom and independence three well-respected businesswomen talula nduli edna whitehead or talula nduli 
Edna Whitehead and Gosazana Kumalo formed the Black Widow Society, a secret organization aimed at liberating women trapped in emotionally and physically abusive relationships by assisting in eliminating their errant husbands. For 15 years, the Black Widow Society operated undetected, impeccably run by the tri triumvir triumvirate. With the help of their solve and mysterious hired gun, Mzwake Kuzwayo, a slick ex-convict, meticulous in his responsibilities. But as the secret organization re recruits more members, the wheels of his of this well old machine are threatening to fall off. Will Talula's controlling streak on Gosazana's unfettering material aspirations jeopardize the future of the Black Widow Society? Or perhaps one of the new recruits, unsettled by the reality of the elimination of her former husband, will lose her nerve and expose the workings of the group after all this time. As the tension mounts, Black Widow Society builds to a chilling and bloody chilling and bloody climax that will keep you guessing and riveted until the very last page okay yeah the last south african book that i have for you guys i also bought at the elemba book festival and this is the daughters of nandi by nogutula mazibu komsimang she is a well-known south african author but i will read you a bit about her it says Nogutula Mazabuga Msimang is an academic filmmaker, broadcaster, and author of six books for younger readers. A previous winner of the Bessie Head What Bessie Head Writing Fellowship. Mazabuga Msimang is a Pandoring Awards finalist for her latest children's books, Kawe Mohade Kasta Semenya. She is a fellow at the University of Pretoria's Future Africa. Future Africa Research Institute. Daughters of Nandi is Mazabugo's debut work of adult fiction. So, um, not sure. Okay, this I did show you guys the cover. For me, this looks like different women in different shapes. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's an interesting cover. Can't wait to uncover what it's all about. The back reads, oh, she spoke at the event, which is what got me to buy her book. It is a signed copy. <laughs> um, and listen, I was very, very, very intrigued. So I cannot wait. I cannot wait to tag in. Okay, it says, as she took her dying breath, Nandim Flongo, mother of Shagaka, sends a cup. Senzanga Kona cursed the house of Zulu and her family, the Mklongos, for the disrespect she endured at their hands. In the ancestral realm, Nandi worries that her malediction may have been ra rash and too dangerous for the descendants of the two houses. The curse can be undone, but it will need a human medium to convey the message to the progeny. Through three historical periods, three women who are extraordinary in their different ways will seek to get restitution for Nandi. Gentle Kia, of a Mutswana woman of the house of Maohi, I don't know, sorry, uh, who marries one of Nandi's descendants as the English, the Boers and the Zulu go to war in the 19th century. Uju, a spirited married woman who carves a space for herself in history during the forced removal of removals of Sophia Town in the 20th century, and in the 21st century, Amangwe, who reluctantly joins her fellow students as they speak up against a meaningless freedom during the Fees Must Fall protests. Will any of these women, three women, manage to ensure Nandim Klongo is? appeased and if not what shall the consequences to the houses of Mklongo and Zulu and to the three daughters of Nandi themselves what shall, what shall be the consequences an engaging debut which seamlessly weaves fact fiction and spirituality while subverting the way the reader perceives history okay I'm ready okay so 
that is one two three four five six seven so i i needed seven books right in order for me to balance out my reading because last month i read three but i do have three more books on the side here which i do want to tap into the other book that i have that is from the continent is black and female by titi dangarenba and this is a collection of essays by the famous author of nervous conditions etc and about the author it says titi dangarenba is the author of three novels nervous conditions winner of the commonwealth Writer's Prize, the, This Mournable Body, shortlisted for the Booker Prize and the Book of Note. She won the Pen Painter Prize in 2021 and the Peace Prize of the German Book Trade. Dangarengba is also a filmmaker, playwright and the director of the Institute of Creative Arts for Progress in, Afri in Africa Trust. She lives in Harare, Zimbabwe. <clears throat> The synopsis to this collection reads, being categorized as black and female does not constrain my writing. Writing assures me that I am more than merely blackness and femaleness. Writing assures me I am. This paradigm shifting essay collection weaves the personal and political in an illuminating exploration of the internationally acclaimed novelist Titi Dagarengba's complex relationship with race and gender. At once philosophical, intimate, and urgent, Dangaremba's landmark essays address for the first time the profound cultural and political questions that underpin her novels. From her experience of life with a foster family in Dover and the difficulty of finding a publisher as a young Zimbabwean novelist to the ways in which colonialism continues to disrupt the lives and minds of those subjugated by empire, Dangarengba writes to recenter marginalized voices. Black and female offers a powerful vision towards remembering, to use Toni Morrison's word, words, those, those whose identities and experiences continue to be fractured by the intersections of history, race, and gender. This one I got from Jonathan Ball Publishers for review purposes. I did not mention that I got this one from Pat McMillan. Uh, South Africa for review purposes and <clears throat> that leaves us with two more books before my car car camera shuts off so I do intend to at least start A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas which is the next book after A Court of Mist and Fury uh, in the series and lastly because of Black History Month and because I really have been wanting to tuck into this one I will start The Prophets, Prophets by Robert John Jr. This one was sent to me by Jonathan Ball Publish no Jonathan Ball Publishers um for review purposes as well. That brings me to the end of my TBR pile. It's rather ambitious, but I've got faith because most of these books are carryovers. So I'm just hoping you cross fingers with me because I will be back here next month to tell you which ones I managed to get through. Otherwise, you can keep up with me in terms of how far I am with whatever it is on the vlogs and until next time i love you so very much for choosing me bye now